Hi, I'm Magnus Walker. Greetings to my downtown LA Arts District warehouse. For those that don't know, I'm a man with a beard, but I'm also an avid Porsche collector and enthusiast. I describe myself as a builder, driver, collector, in fact. A fashion icon of the early 90s who designed clothes worn by numerous Hollywood rock stars, Magnus Walker has become a name synonymous with Porsche thanks to his $7.5 million collection and his knack for building the most sought after custom Porsches around. Today, we take a look at his most rare Porsches, from historical limited releases to one of a kind custom builds from Mr. Porsche himself. So the car I'm standing next to here is my 1980 924 Carrera GT. Pretty rare car, Porsche only made 406 of these. Essentially it's the evolution from the 1980 uh, 924 Turbo. To put it in Porsche perspective, it's the same motor, tuned differently with different cams, producing 210 horsepower compared to approximately 160. And it's like the street version of the Le Mans uh, class winning 924 GTS or GTR. So I'm stood next to the car, affectionately known as 277. Long story short, the number doesn't really mean much, but the car means a whole lot more. Started life as a 1971 911T. T was the base model of production back then. By my math, I've owned it 21 years. I started club racing in this car in 2002, doing tracks such as Willow Springs, Laguna Seca, Thunder Hill, California Speedway. But it's become a pretty well-known iconic car. It's the car I'm most associated with. It's a car that I call my flat foot car, I meaning I can keep my foot planted most of the time. It's the car I'm most comfortable in, it fits me like my favorite pair of old shoes or jeans. Other than this car being repainted once in its original Irish green color, it is bone stock original. We can't really go back in time, but I can get behind the wheel of my 1966 911 and it feels like I've gone back 54 years to 1966. 80 to 100 miles an hour feels really, really fast in that car. It's moving around, it's making a lot of noises, you're connected to it, it's the visceral feeling. 100 in this car feels like you're doing 150. 150 in a new car feels like you're doing 100 because it's sort of disconnected. It's one of my favorite cars, it's a 1978 SC. I call it the 78 SC HR, hot rod. It's a car that I acquired, I don't know, almost 10 years ago. It was a former track car that I converted to more of a street track car. But the good thing about this and the relatability to this car is it was a budget build. So this is the do-it-yourself punk rock version of creating a fun car for the street without breaking the bank. This is car number 300, 310. It's the 310th 911 ever built, if they built them in sequence, which they didn't. This was one of the first half dozen cars at the Brumos dealership. If you're a Porsche guy, of course you know about Brumos. The little Porsche dealership in Jacksonville, Florida, that had Peter Gregg and Hurley Haywood as its number one and two drivers. Hurley Haywood has won, you know, Daytona five times, he's won Le Mans multiple times, and he's really a Porsche racing icon and legend. This is a 67 911S. The short wheelbase 911 debuted in 1964 with a two liter motor and approximately 130 horsepower. By 1967, Porsche had debuted the 911S. Same two liter motor, but different cam, different carb setup, now producing 160 horsepower. I own five 67 S's, I'm now down to two, but this is a holy grail car. They're now worth probably 10 times what I paid for them. So I'm standing next to my center row of what I call the early turbos. These are the 75, six and seven, three liter turbos. 1975 was the birth of the turbo. Porsche only made 284 samples for the entire world. Only 32 of them, like this copper brown metallic one, a right-hand drive. This car here is the first US production turbo documented by the museum to be the first turbo sold in America. Due to safety and emissions, the turbo didn't arrive on the US shore until 1976. This was the first one sold. <laughs> 
Here's a great example of Porsche's mid-engine car. This is a 914. Well, that's a fun little project that I did for the SEMA trade show in Las Vegas back in November. It was literally sort of cosmetically made over in three days by myself and Felix Holtz, the guy I bought the car from. We essentially just sprayed it up with rattle cans and took it to the country's biggest auto show and displayed it with Mobile One. Let's talk about the uh, 1990. 964. This is my most performance orientated build to date. Obviously it looks like a 911, but if you come around to the front, the hood is channeled because the roof is channeled. I have the fenders louvered. This was something that had never been done. These are individually stamped into the fender. I took an early turbo tail, gave it a sort of gurney flap at the back. Then it's rolling on the 17 inch version of my Outlaw wheel with Brembo race brakes. It has a 3.8 liter RS spec motor built on a 1995 993 motor with approximately 320 horsepower. The car's kind of subdued in its appearance, but this is the car that the more you look at it, the more details you see, the more tweaks you see that have been put into the car, and it's a blast to drive. So guys, thanks for taking the tour with me. I'm a goal oriented collector. My new goal for the year is to grow my beard longer. But all joking aside, let's get out and drive, pedal to the metal, stay motivated, never give up on your dreams, and let's have some fun. Cheers and rock on.